Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a faithful follower of Christ and I'm making this video for anyone that cares. And there might be a few of you, not many, but a few that care that I, I just want to let you know I'm finished making the Woe Is She reading videos. I started that December 1st. I made a video every single day in December and then every Wednesday after that up until, up until last Wednesday. So faithfully, we made it through nine books of the Bible. If you're interested, I just start the video, I say a prayer, and then I read a chapter or two of a book of the Bible that the Lord led me to share, and um, it was lovely. I enjoyed it, and I completed 62 different videos, and surprisingly, when I woke up this morning, the Lord let me know that that mission was complete, and I'm relieved because this particular Wednesday was a big one. I had my ultrasound. Praise God, I do not have an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Hallelujah. Apparently, according to that lady, I'm just so thin, which is fun to hear. I said, oh, isn't that nice to hear after losing 100 pounds? Um, and I don't have a bunch of muscle, she said. Apparently, five giant babies distorts your abdominals. I don't know. Everyone else's aorta, abdominal aorta, she said it's kind of tucked back towards her spine. And she said, yours is just right there. I can easily feel my pulse in my stomach. Thank goodness it's no big deal. Okay. Then we had a status court hearing with these boys. We got them out of school. We met with the judge and their mom and dad, which is really fun because I went and got their mom and dad and picked them up from school and they were so thrilled to see their mom and dad. We just had a big fun day. Status court hearing with the judge that will do the final court hearing. But today he just wanted to meet everyone, make sure we're all on the same page, go over with Shatika and um, the mom and the dad, making sure that they are aware that um, if they want a lawyer, they can have one, blah, blah, blah. It took two minutes, but it was fun and wonderful. And I was able to bring um, their dad back here to their house and show him around. And he got the full grand tour and got to see their new little bedroom and bunk beds and whatnot. So great day. Again, I'm relieved to no longer do these woe she videos, but let me show you. We have completed together, if you've been listening, and there are a few of you that have been, um, Ephesians, Hebrews, James, Colossians, John, Galatians, Habakkuk, 1st and 2nd Peter. I had written down 1st and 2nd Timothy. Greg and I will read those together. So if you want to pick up where I'm leaving off, I'm going to pick up with 1st and 2nd Timothy with Greg. Then I will continue with my Bible reading group. Uh, we started April 5th, 2020, and we have made our way through... Um, 30 something books so far. Thank goodness. The Bible is 66 books long. I swear by it. I live by it. I believe every word is God breathed and can be used to rebuke and instruct. There's scripture for you. Hebrews 4 12. The word is alive and active, sharper than a double edged sword. It can divide bone and marrow, soul and spirit, and it can read our thoughts. So I realized a few years ago, if I really believe that this is not a dusty old book, but the living word, and Jesus is the word, John 1, 1, then I should probably read it. Um, first and second Timothy, a good one out of Timothy, second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. But the Lord did not give you a spirit of timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Susan, Susan Miller, and Jill, you all come to mind. Jill, what a lovely Holy Spirit moment we had earlier texting today about how difficult it can be at times to not judge others. And one of the best things we could possibly do when we look at them and see the earthly things they've done, that we would um, 
we would rank, right? We would rank it as worse than some of the sins we've committed against God. I just think, well, Jill and I talked about it today. And speaking of self-discipline, it's so important that we, if we're going to look at other people, at their sin, it's blatant and obvious that in some way we see a mirror and we see ourselves because if it weren't for the grace of God, we'd be as lost as anyone else. And if we get sidetracked by judging their sin, we will stunt our own spiritual growth and sanctification process. We are called to love them and pray for them. And I told Jill, we can do everything Jesus tells us to do. And the only way we can do it is by getting ourselves out of the way and allowing him to do it. The Holy Spirit. Susan Miller and I were talking earlier or yesterday and I was having a moment where I wanted so badly to just cry. Just bawl. Just right there in my kitchen. So exhausted. Feeling so overwhelmed. But I couldn't. Because I can't deny how well things are going. So regardless of how I'm feeling, I can look at these seven children and see how well they're doing. They're thriving. I told my mom, it's a comic. Like if you see these little kids with their backpacks on and their hair, we and they're every morning, hair, face, teeth, <clears throat> deodorant and cologne. <clears throat> we lay their clothes out the night before. We get their hom homework done in twos. I have two first graders, two second graders, a fifth grader, a tenth grader, and a twelfth grader. Um, I mean, this is causing me to step up, level up. <laughs> I don't have a choice if I want to function, and I do want to function. But I said the comic would be like this little kid, precious, clean, shiny, like like clean face, shiny teeth, full belly, showered, shoes tied, ready for school, sparkling, making friends. These kids, they're thriving. And then like there's the mom off to the side, just exhausted, like crazy mom hair, no makeup, probably not smelling great. That's how I feel some days, but I can't bring myself to complain about it because it's so obvious that I, I tell myself daily, one of my favorite mantras, I have everything I need to do everything God is asking me to do. So thank you, Susan Miller, for your prayers and for reminding me that I have power, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, the same power that demands the dead to raise lives in us. I will link that song below. God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Self-control is the ninth fruit of the spirit. Would I like to throw in the towel and just let my flesh lead me? Yes, I would. But what I want more than that is to be spirit led and let the spirit that dwells within me lead me. First Corinthians 16, nine, am I getting that right? Here's second Timothy one, seven. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. First Corinthians 16, nine. Let's see if I got this right. No, actually, I bet it's 619. 1 Corinthians 619. There it is. 1 Corinthians 619. Do you not know 
that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your body. Amen, Paul. So that's it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Everything has a season. I love you dearly. If you want to continue with me, Greg and I are going to read First and Second Timothy together, and then I will be back at it uh, with my Bible reading group, making our way through all 66 books of the Bible. That's it. I love you dearly. Thank you so much for traveling with me. I pray that regardless of where our journeys take us, where the Lord takes us here on earth, we will all meet up together in eternity. We are going to spend eternity somewhere. Um, I don't know how long I will continue vlogging or carnival vlogging. Only the Lord knows. But this is it for Woe Is She. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Go therefore and make disciples, baptizing them. Jesus gives the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Therefore go. Willing obedient, engaged, surrendered, hydrated, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. I love you dearly. We'll talk again soon.